And after work, he would stay back and sit with the consultants and observe everything they were doing, learning from them along the way, these professional consultants. This is real world education. He wasn't just learning and waiting until he finished the material to start applying for jobs and hoping for the best among hundreds of applicants, but he was actively pursuing all the opportunities that he could seize to demonstrate a skill, to practice on real world projects and learn from professionals for six months. What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. So let's be honest, this is a tough economy for self-taught devs. Inflation has caused tons of layoffs in the tech space, and thus, companies that are hiring are getting better options to choose from, more experienced options. But this economy will not last forever. We will pull out of it and things will be easier. Perhaps it happens before you're ready to apply for a job. Great. But we don't know that. So in the meantime, you'll have to put in a bit more effort to land that job. And that's what this video is about. What does it take to become a self-taught developer in this current economy? Well, YouTube recommended a video to me the other day that demonstrates exactly what it takes. This kind of attitude and effort is exactly how you find success. So I have four steps to help you out today, along with some brief clips from this video, which I'll get to in a minute. Let's get started. All right, step one. Are you all in? Are you 100% sold that you want to be a programmer? If you're not, you will fail. If it's just a fun alternative that you could take, it sounds interesting, and you'll give it a try, you'll fail. Take some time to do some research first, try out some simple coding, go to Freed Code Camp, try your hand at it, and build some simple things. Are you smitten by it? Do you love it? Do you feel like you must do this as a career? That's what happened to me when I got the coding bug at 34. I was in a crummy job and had no real skill set to fall back on. It was do or die essentially for me. So this video today is by a Nicholas Renat who went from accounting and banking to a data scientist role, which is actually a much harder pursuit than the one we're talking about. But he has this attitude that has to be also your attitude as well to become successful in this transition. So check this out. And everything that I read sounded absolutely amazing. So from that point onward, I decided to make a decision that come hell or high water, I was going to become a data scientist. And every step that I took from here on out in my career was going to be in pursuit of landing that dream role. No matter what, this guy was going to land the role. So first, you need to determine that you're all in on this thing and that you'll do what it takes to land that first job. Half efforts will not get you a job in this economy. Step two, determine what technology and steps you will take. In fact, it might take you a month to research, to try out some languages or technology, and put together a plan of action to move forward with what you want out of this. I have a few generic blueprints that I'll put down in the description below, but you will ultimately have to make this call for yourself. I get so many writing me for direction when they run into their first roadblock. And while I do try to assist, it's ultimately in your hand to step up and make adjustments to keep moving forward. This is your journey, and you must know that it can take some turns and twists along the way, but as long as you stay on the path, you'll keep from getting lost. So anyway, this guy did some research and determined that he was gonna go the way of Python. Even when tempted with learning R instead, he stuck with it based on his research. So he determined his technology, and then here's what he does next. I looked at popular languages and advancements that were happening in fields like deep learning, natural language processing, and computer vision. In my mind, I had it stuck that Python was the language to learn. This is where a lot of innovation was happening. So what do you wanna do? Do you wanna build websites? Do you wanna build web apps? Do you wanna automate? Do you wanna do embedded systems? Do you wanna make games? Take some time to determine what field you wanna get into, and thus, what language you should be moving forward with. Once you determine this, you'll find it much easier to come up with the blueprint of your own, what you need to learn, what you need to get good at, and in what timeline. Once you have this, master the language. Really nail it down. And once you do, and you get good at writing code and building things, it will get easier then to pick up other languages as needed in the future. Don't get hung up on trying to learn all the languages. And don't get stuck on this step. Like I said, programming concepts transfer to all languages. Some are easier, some are harder. But in general, just move forward with that first language you determine and build stuff with it. Be able to write like 50 to 100 lines of code in one sitting. Step three is that there is no substitute for sitting down and learning the technology. Technology. There's no shortcut. There's no low hanging fruit. You have to put in the time, you have to learn the language, you have to build stuff guided and on your own, and you need to become proficient in that language. Now what this guy did is he took it step by step according to his plan. He devised the plan and executed on it step by step. I'd already established the habit of going to university on Saturday and Sunday and studying for a number of hours to make sure I was up to speed with the content. Now, because I didn't have the course of study set by the masters anymore, I had to come up with a replacement. So I bought myself the book Python Crash Course by Eric Mathis and set myself a goal of doing eight Pomodoros on Saturday and eight Pomodoros on Sunday. 
I tracked each one of these Pomodoros using an app called Pomo to do. The goal was to get proficient in Python so that I could begin learning machine learning, data science, and deep learning. This took roughly four weeks in order to get through the entire book. So this guy worked all week at his job, and then on the weekends, he learned for four hours each day, uninterrupted for four weeks to learn Python. He determined up front, I gotta learn Python, put a plan together, and then executed on it. Four weeks, focused study to learn Python, in order to then go on and learn the next thing that requires Python. He knew exactly what he was supposed to be working on first. And then in the video after that, he bought a machine learning book, now that he knew Python, and did that exact same weekend routine until he was done with that. So for you, you need to determine what you should learn first, then do it. Then what you should learn second, then do it. Put in that time to learn exactly what you need to get you to proficiency. And finally, step four is to build and network. Now this is the mindset you need. Listen very closely to this. I told my manager about the new skills I was picking up on the weekend and asked if I could build some projects and automate some stuff for our team in my own time. He was super open to this. I began to automate reports and build visualizations using Python. I also built some time series forecasting models to help with our financial budgeting and forecasting. Now it just so happens that I got lucky at this time. Our team was implementing a new system for financial simulation and modeling called TM1. This would help our team with budgeting, forecasting, and a large number of our financial processes that we had to go through. We brought in consultants to help with this implementation, and I got the bright idea that maybe I could learn a thing or two from them. So every night after work, I would stay back and sit with one of the consultants and try to learn what they were doing. As part of this process, I learned an absolute ton about logic, control systems, security, governance, and data modeling in general. I also managed to pick up a little bit of SQL along the way. I stuck around for around about six months while this project was being implemented. And along the way, I accumulated a ton of experience. So much experience, in fact, I was able to leverage it to actually become a consultant implementing TM1. Okay, so this guy asked his boss if he could start creating forecasting models in automation for his team on his own time, not on the clock, on his own time. He's getting that word out. He's letting people know. In addition, a professional consulting team was brought in and after work, he would stay back and sit with the consultants and observe everything they were doing, learning from them along the way, these professional consultants. This is real world education. The point is he wasn't just learning and waiting until he finished the material to start applying for jobs and hoping for the best among hundreds of applicants, but he was actively pursuing all the opportunities that he could seize to demonstrate a skill, to practice on real world projects and learn from professionals for six months. And after this, he was able to become a consultant on his own with that system that the consultants were implementing. Now that's getting after it, knowing what you want and seizing the opportunity. Now, last clip here, the company, they didn't have a data science division. So guess what? I began building machine learning models for our clients after hours to show them what was possible. They didn't ask for it but I built it anyway, because I knew that there was value there that they'd be interested in. They didn't ask for it, but I built it anyway. He did it anyway, because he knew the value it would bring not only to them, but to himself. What opportunities do you have at work? Do you have with friends or at meetups to show off your skills or to provide solutions to other people? Anyway, this guy went on to build a consulting startup, started going to all these networking events, asking questions, meeting people regularly, and even had an elevator pitch for those quick conversations. And all of this eventually paid off when he landed a job at IBM as a data scientist. He would have never gotten that role with all these other PhD'd up employees if he didn't network, jump at opportunities, become proficient, and demonstrate a skill to people that matter. So let me end here with three takeaways. If you're applying for jobs only on LinkedIn or Indeed.com, you probably won't hear a lot back. You need to explore other avenues like smaller companies or businesses in your local area. Think hospitals, factories, colleges. And you need to be networking with the people in the places that you want to work. Introduce yourself on LinkedIn. Start going to meetups. Have that elevator pitch ready. Start creating content and share it all over the place until the right people start taking notice. Start building solutions at the job you're at, if you're able, even if it's on your own time. Express to the IT department at your work that you want to transition to tech and would love an opportunity to do some things in the meantime. What's the worst that can happen? They say no. Find a local business whose website sucks. Call them and offer to revamp it. What I'm getting at here is you have to think outside the box in this economy and get more personal instead of just shipping resumes. Number two, I know that many of you are older than this guy and you have a life. You're married, you have kids, you have life going on. Obviously, you can't take every weekend, both days, to just go to the library and study or go in your room and study. But you can find time, maybe late night, maybe early morning. Put your phone away, cancel Netflix, make time to do it. If I could do it at 34, married with four kids, 
you can do it too. Third and finally, when you're trying to actually land the job, be sure to practice interview questions in addition to the coding challenges. Remember, you're human. I mean, you're interviewing with another human who probably had an argument that morning with his wife or with his kids. They're human like you. Don't put them on a pedestal. Be prepared for those everyday questions like, what was the time in your past job that you screwed up and what did you do to fix it? In addition to the technical stuff, sometimes we study all the technical stuff and we forget about those personal human questions. And that's all I have today. Keep pushing on. Let me know your comments below. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so and I'll see you in the next video.